Big 12 taking on Mountain West. Vino, how are we approaching this one? Well, I really, really, really um, <laughs> drilled this one down, Joe, to the point where I'm going to play Utah State over their team total of 72 and a half in this game. A few reasons why. There, there's some advantages here for Utah State, the Mountain West team. One coming from the free throw line. If you look at TCU throughout the Big 12 season, it's a team that didn't get to the free throw line very much. And it's a team that allowed a lot of free throws. They were number seven in Big 12 free throw rate, about middle of the road. Utah State in the Mountain West didn't allow a lot of free throws. They were the third best at keeping teams off the charity stripes. So you got a good matchup there for Utah State. And then if you look at Utah State's offense, they were number two in the Mountain West in free throw rate. A lot of that due to great Osibor, the big guy in the middle. Um, but T TCU put a lot of people on a charity stripe. And that's been a common theme of them, I'm going to say, the last two, three years. They, they, they do foul quite a bit. I mean, it's a, it's a contact league. It's a physical league. So you have to take some of that into consideration. Um, they were eighth out of 14 teams. So maybe Utah State gets to the free throw line. I mentioned Great Osibor, not a good free throw shooter. Only 62%, 63%, excuse me, from the line. And he got there 267 times, more than anybody else on the squad. However, their starting guard tandem, Darius Brown, Ian Martinez, those two guys both shoot 86%, and they're two and three in free throw attempts on the season. So it, it's always who gets to the free throw line, not necessarily what the team overall free throw percentage is. For TCU, um, team free throw percentage is pretty good overall. But I like Utah State to make some hay at the free throw line. And then I think just a combination of Utah State's ability to shoot the basketball number one in effective field goal percentage in the Mountain West this year, which had some really good defensive teams. Um, number one effective field goal percentage, number one in two-point percentage against a TCU team that likes pace, 31st quickest in the country. So when you start combining really good shooting with quicker tempo, obviously equal sign says more scoring opportunities. And we like that when we're looking at Utah State over 72 and a half. TCU has allowed over 72 and a half in three of their last four. The only reason I mention that is because these last, you know, half dozen games of the season are generally the second or third time around against an opponent. You should play better defense at that point, not worse. TCU. Didn't get any better, like I say, allowed over this number, 72 and a half in three of their last four. Utah State scored over 72 and a half in six of their last 10, four of their last five. So they're a pretty good offensive team. I think all this stuff adds up. The site here is Indianapolis NBA Arena. Um, probably a, a good spot for shooting background. You always worry about that a little bit, but I think it's going to be enough pace. Utah State shoots it good enough inside and out penetrate inside and out enough. And when you get these teams that are good offensively, like both of these are, and you get them loose and free from the, you know, the binds of their own conference opponents, generally they're tough to prepare for. So I'm going to take Utah State here to get at least the 73 points in this game against TCU tonight. 